Hey friends, this is Marilyn from tarotclarity.com and today's video um, I thought might be of interest to many of you. In the past few days I've been focusing largely on the TDM1 style, just, as, just a coincidence, because I've been showcasing um, decks by Marco Benedetti, namely his Noble, his, his recent publication of the Noble, and his 1743 Jean Payenne. Uh, Tarot of Marseille. And in showing those decks, um, I commented how the 1743, although it was a late date, was still a TDM1 style, whereas uh, we have many decks of the TDM2 style well before 1743. And the point I was trying to make then and now is that the, the TDM1 or TDM2 doesn't necessarily give us a clue as to the date that the deck was created, but more by, uh, more of um, who, by, or where, where it might have been uh, created. I have today four decks, and today's card maker that I'm focusing on is Yves Renaud. I have other decks by him, but I've showcased them recently, and these are the four that um, I have not. The Pierre Madigny of 1709, clearly well be before the Jean Payen 1743. And I believe that this is considered to be the very earliest TDM2 style tarot deck that we have. Francois Harry, 1718. Tarot of Marseille of Francois Chausson, 1736. And then of course, the Nicholas Conver, 1760, which has kind of become the quintessential TDM2, or um, even the quintessential Terra of Marseille style. So let me flip the camera and compare the four decks. These decks were published in the following locations. The Madigny in Dijon, the Harry in Switzerland, and the last two, the Chausson and the Conver in Marseille. So right off the bat, um, We sort of have, I, I think we can see a, a, a type of refinement in the Conver, which I guess um, we'll see if it may, holds out for the rest of the deck. But um, it might explain why many people consider the Conver a very beautiful deck because of its level of articulation, I imagine. It's interesting, you know, we, we see flesh-colored pants being torn and underneath the flesh-colored pants, which would you, one would presume would be the flesh, you know, is the color of darker fabric. So it's an interesting pecu peculiarity, isn't it? I'm trying to look at the faces to see, you know, which are the most similar. These two are very similar, not exact. The Madini is very, uh, very elegant face.
again, we, we see a level of refinement in the Conver that I don't think we particularly see in the Chaucen or the Harry. But the Madinese also, also has a level of, it's also rather elegant, I think. I'm not criticizing the center two decks. Um, I'm not, but it, it's just a, a different level of execution, I think. All of these TDM2. So as early as 1709 is the earliest known example of TDM2, which uh, predates both Pi Ns, you know, which were both TDM1. And it's just eight years later, um, eight years after the uh, Dodal. So, you know, as I mentioned, TDM1 and TDM2 don't necessarily have anything to do with which came earlier and which came later. It more than it, uh, it has more to do with um, location, I think, or who was creating the deck. And, And, you know, uh, I guess their inspiration or the decks they were copying from. And here we, we don't, we no longer see um, like a shepherd's hook, you know, for the uh, Pope's sta you know, staff, we see a triple tiered cross. So that might be considered um, one of the first telltale s signs of a TDM2. It might not be real consistent. I think the Payens don't necessarily have a, a shepherd's hook, you know, a shepherd's staff. They, um, neither does the Do Doll, but it's not a triple tier either. We notice that um, Cupid is not blindfolded. Oh my goodness. I've kind of gotten a few cards out of whack here. I also believe, I think another point of distinction is that Cupid faces in another direction um, than in the TDM one. Let me, let me pull the Noble, the Noble Lover card and see what we have. Yeah, see? That might be another thing I, I failed to mention when I was doing the Noble and pointing out TDM1. And we no longer have the scalloped fabric um, canopy.
And we'll notice that the chair backs are decidedly different. They don't look like wings. They don't look like they could be mistaken for wings. They do most clearly look like chair backs. Whereas the TDM1 style cards that we I've been showcasing this past week really were ambiguous as to whether they were wings or chair backs, but there's no question here that we're looking at a chair back. So you see there's a rich tradition of um, pattern. And here we still have the reversed number 12. Isn't that interesting? Ah, but it's, it's corrected in the Conver. So we still have the eight, you know, what would be the modern day Roman numeral for eight rather than 12 in these three. And then in the Conver, we actually have 12. And we have the U instead of the V. Now in all of these TDM twos, we have what appears to be yellow ink, and, and this one doesn't have black underneath, but yellow ink over black on three of the four. And um, the word death is missing from this card. So we don't see death in, the, in the, any of these. Temperance. I'm looking at the pattern in the wings. In the Dodal and the two Payens, we saw identical markings in the wings. We saw identical markings in just about all the decks, all three of those decks. Um, we don't see, you know, that here. The similar though, similar. So here the Harry and the um, is the only one of the devils I think that is covered up because uh, even here the devil is exposed. But here I I don't you know you can see underneath the clothing I don't know if that was like an afterthought to put it there or or if it mis a misalignment of the ink. Okay, now in the tower, we start to see what appears to be more action from the heavens rather than 
<clears throat> the fire emanating from the tower. And the moon is no longer front facing. We see that the moon now faces to the left. again rather than a V for the letter U. And again, a U in the convert rather than a V, and a J rather than an I. Um, it looks like an I, but I, I think it is a J. You can kind of make it in person, you can kind of make out the, the loop of the J. And the world. And we see the reversed C. I think uh, Jean, oh gosh, I think it was J.M. David makes a case that um, perhaps the, this was supposed to have been uh, a C, you know, as to identify Christ, you know, in the mandala. Um, but at some point, you know, it, it became a reversed image and maybe whoever um, was printing it didn't recognize that it should have been a C. And, and it might not have been, but that was just uh, an interesting supposition. And we do see what appears to be a feminine form. If you haven't read J.M. David's book, um, Reading the Marseille Tarot, it's probably the best book I could suggest to read regarding um, the TDM. except for the Harry, have a similar floral motif in the center there. The Harry is a little different. Let's have them all pointing in the same direction, just for consistency.
It's interesting, the Madani and the Chawson have a red square in the center, as does the Convert. All of the center flowers are pretty similar in shape. And here we have a piercing with the sword as we do in the Chaucin as we do in the Converse. So the Harry again is the odd man out. A rather elegant piercing through the weaving, right? So three of the four of these are um, before the 1743 Jean Payen, which was TDM1. Look how beautiful. So there is definitely, you know, a, fin a finesse with the Conver um, that we might arguably say is not as present in these other printings. And although I'm sure there are some decisions that Mr. Renaud had to take in order to um, print um, these cards, I consider his decks more or less facsimile decks. The Madani, um, I guess, in, if I were to give a judgment, you know, um, I think is the, the second most ele elegant of these four.
Let's compare these two. You see an elegance in the hands and in the face. Let's look at these hands. Not as elegant. Not bad, but not as. I think it's interesting that three of the four have these configurations. I don't know if that's supposed to be water escaping or whatever, but that the Madani has a more feathery protrusion. So it might be worth it for me to do a hairy and a Bertle, um, um comparison. Burdell, excuse me, Burdell comparison. Both being Swiss. I think the cardstock between these four decks is identical either, and they're not all the same size, I don't think, Even despite them all being published by Eves. Chasson, that all of them, all of all of these are really beautiful. These uh, five of cups. Oh, six. My bad. <laughs> You know, I'm looking through the lens. I'm not looking at the cards directly. So sometimes I miss things. Here we have an incorrect way of making the six. Oh no, that's correct. Excuse me, that's correct. Oh, I guess I screwed up there too, huh? Might be, oh. Five, six, seven, oh. I'm not sure what I did. Okay, all right, that's. So 
So as I'm saying that I'm looking through a lens and I don't always catch my mistakes or I don't catch everything on every card. That's what I'm talking about. I, uh, I sometimes can't like, accurately see what I'm doing. I can definitely understand why the Conver is uh, considered very eloquent, but I do like the Madinee too. The Madinee of 1709 is also really, really elegant. Even if it's not as sophisticated in the printing, there's still an elegance about it. It's really beautiful. My boyfriend clearly in, in these cards, it clearly appears to be a hat in his hand. A somewhat draping over of the chalice with his tunic, but not as complete as we've seen in other cards. All with a wreath in his hair. and the horses there is similarity our queen definitely has the does not have a window. She definitely has the canopy overhanging. I mentioned that in when we were discussing the TDM1 style. But clearly it remains, you know, the overhang. But at some point, and maybe it's in the Italian decks, you know, that copied the French decks at some point, um, maybe that's where the window turned up or what looked like a window. In the Dodal, it was uh, ambiguous whether it was part of the canopy or if it was a, a window. The next time I do a video with the, uh, a, a deck with the Queen of cups appearing to have a window, I'll have to point it out. Interestingly, the thumb does not appear in the uh, hairy And I'm going to go through these quickly. Yeah, there's still a elegance to the Madini, I think for sure.
a, a certain level of refinement that we're just not seeing in the Harry or the Shasen. Could just be the quality of the deck we've been left down with. It doesn't have to be um, necessarily the way it really, you know, was consistently. I mean, this these particular copies that we have may not have been the best, that's all. They may have been, they're just ones that survived. There's no telling. If they were all the same. I mean, I imagine that, um, I imagine, I imagine they must have been similar, similarly reproduced, but we, we don't know, right? We, we, it's just the, what we find, the embodiment of these few decks that come down to us. Hello. It looks like 1672, doesn't it? Oh yeah, I think I do remember there being discussion about the dates on the Chasen number two card. But I think somebody had a good explanation for it and they concluded that 1736 is the accurate date. Hmm. Now holding the cards and doing this with them, I'm noticing that the Conver um, has a very enjoyable card stock. So Eve's did the recipe he used for the Conver is a little different. It's it's very nice. There we have it, friends. I hope you enjoyed this comparison of four TDM twos, <laughs> all by Eve's Renaud, a quality card maker. Until next time, friends, peace and stay well.